Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm an archaeology master's student at Durham University. I'm also local. I grew up in Teesside and I live here again with my young family, so postcards from the past feels extra special. I'll be talking today about a place that is very dear to me and my family, Preston Hall Museum, and I'm going to take you on a whistle-stop tour. Preston Hall is located in Preston-on-Tees, which is part of Eagles Cliff, which itself is just north of Yarm, in the borough of Stockton-on-Tees. There's a lot of tees. Preston Hall was built in 1825 by David Burton Fowler as an agricultural estate with four farms, a quarry and brickworks. The hall passed to Fowler's great-nephew, Marshall Robinson, on the proviso he adopted the surname Fowler. The hall later passed to his son, Marshall Fowler II, who sold the hall and some of the park in 1882 to Robert Ropner for £27,500. The rest of the park was retained by the Fowlers, who continued to farm. Robert Ropner, later Sir Robert Ropner, was an incredibly successful shipbuilding magnate of German descent who, as a young man, had made his way to Teesside after stowing himself away on a British ship in Hamburg. He made the rough journey to West Hartlepool where he began his empire. Over several decades, Ropner added extensions to the hall, including this wonderful winter garden, the entrance porch and billiards room. Ropner is also famed locally for gifting land to the people of Stockton. This is now Ropner Park and there is a lovely walk and cycle path between the two parks. The hall passed to Robert's son Leonard when he died in 1924 and when Leonard died in 1937 it ceased to be used as the family home. Saved by the Stockton Corporation from becoming a housing development, the hall was then opened as a museum on the 3rd of June 1953 and it was listed Grade 2 in 1983. The museum has undergone two major refits in that time, most recently between 2008 and 2012, and there are new plans for an additional exhibition space which will allow much more of the museum's vast collection to be displayed. In the Collectors and Collecting Gallery on the ground floor, we can find Dice Players by Georges Delator, one of the museum's most famous exhibits. This painting was completed around 1650 and is one of only a very few Delator paintings in existence. Upstairs, we move past a sculpted metal installation of the River Tees towards a display of archaeological artefacts, including the Yarm Viking helmet, which was discovered in the 1950s in Chapel Yard, Yarm, the first of its kind to be found in the UK. Recently, a project led by Dr Chris Capel of Durham University has looked deeper into the authenticity of the helmet, its composition, materials, which concluded, in brief, that the helmet is made of iron bands and plates riveted together with a simple knob at the top. The damage to the helmet is consistent with an object being hit by a plough or spade whilst buried, and due to its construction, it is likely to have been functional and not for display purposes. These posts are made of frostily marble, which is actually a limestone, and these are believed to have formed part of Stockton Castle, which once stood upon the Tees. Nothing remains of the castle, however, though with the area due for redevelopment soon, perhaps there will be some more discoveries. Within the community curated space, there is a selection of artworks celebrating the NHS and local lockdown heroes who served the community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Also on display is Giant Head of Ben by Nahim Shoa. London-born artist Shoa is best known for his detailed portraits of black and mixed-race sitters. Beautiful community projects featuring artists Susie Devi and Jane Bizimana are also on display here too. We step out now into the Victorian Street, an absolute favourite with visitors, especially children. And the street features um, a bank, a confectioner's selling sweets with the friendliest staff. A chemist's, a Victorian style cafe where you can get scones and a cup of tea. There's a blacksmith's filled with tools. There's a printer's, a draper's, a children's traditional toy shop. There's also a baker's, a police station, a fish and chip shop. Unfortunately, it doesn't sell fish and chips like Beamish. And there's also a violin maker's tucked away in a corner. Finally, we come to the gardens, one of the more recent additions, opening in 2012. Passing through the meadow filled with wildflowers and fruit trees and into the beautiful walled kitchen garden filled with seasonal fruits and vegetables and beautifully coloured flowers. It evokes the character of a working Victorian kitchen garden and this has been boosted recently with the addition of the gardener's bothy, 
filled with all the things a handy gardener would need. The walled garden is perhaps one of my favourite outdoor spaces here. It's so peaceful and fragrant on a warm afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed this quick postcard from Preston Hall Museum. It's one of our favourites with something for everybody. It's very accessible and super friendly. Thank you.